Hi, this is Andrea from One Nine Design, and I'm going to walk you through the steps to add a form on your Squarespace website. Forms are great tools to use for a variety of different um, options, and um, most often we see them used as a contact form. But in today's example, I'm going to give you um, the steps to add a form to your website that can be used for feedback from either donors or clients or event attendees, um, really any purpose. But uh, regardless of how you use the form, the steps are going to be the same. So I am logged in here to the one nine design website. I'm just over here on a training page and to get started, I'm going to click edit to go into my page and I'm going to add the form block. So um, wherever on the page you want to add the form, we're just going to use the insertion bubble here to click and then we're going to drop down here to add the form block. Now you'll see when we um, choose that option, we get the default forms here or default um, fields. And those are going to be things like email, subject, and message. Um, they're assuming you're doing a contact form. But in this case, we're going to do, like I said, a feedback form. So I'm going to go ahead and change the name of the form. That does matter. Um, in some cases, the website visitor will see the form name and that will be included um, when your results are emailed to you. So we've added the feedback form name here, and now it's time to alter our fields. So um, we can very easily delete the fields that are there just by using the trash can, and then we can add new ones as well. So I'm going to leave name, um, and I'm going to leave email, and then I'm going to um, change the name of message here, and I'm just going to make this say, um, uh, give us your feedback. And that is just going to change the label here on the form. Now, when I click edit in any of the fields, I can add a description to the field. Um, and I can also add placeholder text if I want, as well as making the field required or not required. And in this case, this is the purpose of our form. So we do want to make it required. Now, in, in our case, this is really all we need for this particular form. So I'm gonna go over to storage and now I have to decide where I want the responses to go. Um, I typically recommend two options here. The first is to send responses to a single email address. And as you can see, it went ahead and popped in my default email address for my account. But you can change that just by clicking the X and adding any other email address you want there and click Connect. Um, we can also integrate this with a MailChimp list. Um, with a Zapier automation um, or over on Google Drive. And I do recommend going ahead and connecting Google Drive as well. That way, um, all of your responses will automatically be added to a sheet, um, which is Google Drive's equivalent of Excel. And it's just a really handy way to keep track of all of your forms. Um, of course, you can also create a folder in your email account um, and have all of the forms go to a folder that would work as well but I do recommend the Google Drive option. Now over on the advanced tab, we can change the language for the submit button, which I always like to do. I just don't like that word. Um, it's very generic. Um, and so, um, you know, this, this really could be whatever you want it to be here on the submit button. You can change the alignment of the button if you want that button to be in the center of the form or left or right. Um, and then I really like this option, your post submit redirect. And so um, this is a great option. Um, don't wanna get too in depth here on this particular video, but if you are tracking um, conversions on your website, and you want to know that someone has taken the action um, that you wanted them to take, you can create a custom thank you page. And then over in Google Analytics, you're going to add that page as your conversion goal. So we know the only way they can get to that um, post submit page is to have completed this form. And so we can track how many people completed the form that way as well. Um, of course, you can always just add a post submit message. Um, that's a great option uh, opportunity there to uh, redirect someone back to your home page or to another page of your website where you have a call to action. So for the sake of this video, we'll wrap it up here just because we wanted to keep this short and sweet. 
Um, just wanted to show you how easy it is to create a form on your website and um, using a, a lot of options that they give you here. Um, we'll just go ahead and show you here if you're going to add a form field, you have a lot of options in here to do that very easily. So um, play around with the forms tool. Let me know if I can help in any way. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel where I do post tutorials. And I also have a free nonprofit resource library on my website. You can find the link to sign up to access that right down there in the description of this video. I'll see you next time.